Welcome to the Whole Council Devotional for Thursday, January 25th. We begin in verse 7 of Genesis chapter 3. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Here we encounter one of the most frustrating things I find in the Bible, and one of the reasons it is so important to study it ourselves. For some peculiar reason, the translators decided to put whatever word they wanted to in verse 8. Probably in the neighborhood of 90% of the English translations I've seen translate verse 8 in a similar way, in the cool of the day, or go even further to say it was in the afternoon or the evening. This is decidedly not what the verse says. The word here translated cool is ruach, a word which means breath or wind, and by extension, spirit. The verse is more accurately translated in the wind of the day, or in the spirit of the day. The translators apparently decided that when the breeze comes up, it is the cool time of the day, and thus translated it as they did. In doing so, they did an incredible disservice to the millions of people who would read that verse over the last several centuries. Now perhaps, in the cool of the day makes more sense to us than in the wind of the day, and certainly then in the spirit of the day. But who decided it was a good idea to translate God's words to us based on what made the most sense or was the most convenient? This word ruach is translated many other times as blast or anger or even courage when using spirit or wind would not only be a more accurate translation of the word, but would also be perfectly understandable in the context of the particular verse in which it is found. To some, this might sound like nitpicking or making a mountain out of a molehill. But I believe God's Word is so valuable that we must do everything we can to preserve and present it exactly as it was written. As we read a couple of days ago, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in Him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Well, with that off my chest, let's look again at verse 8. I can't tell you exactly what the phrase translated cool of the day means, but what I find interesting and amusing, if it weren't for the context, is the fact that Adam and Eve try to hide themselves from God. It strikes me as similar to what a baby or toddler does when they put their hands or perhaps a blanket in front of their face to hide from daddy or mommy. Just as we might say, where's Ralphie? We find in verse 9, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? God sees the man and the woman as plain as day as they attempt to hide in the trees, but he humors them and asks Adam where he is. God is inescapable. David writes in Psalm 139, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Adam and Eve are afraid, and, like a little child, put their hands in front of their eyes in a futile attempt to hide from God. We might chuckle at their foolishness, but we often do the same thing. No one will see or know if I commit this sin. Locked away in my room, no one will know that I did such and such. While it's unlikely that we actually think or say those things, in our spiritual immaturity, we often conveniently forget that God can and does see all. 
Now, while that fact has a scare you straight, Santa Claus is coming to town sort of vibe to it, what beauty there is in what David writes. While you know everything about me and all of my flaws, everywhere I go, you are with me, watch over me, lead me and protect me. Not only that, but knowing everything about us as he does, he still loves us and thinks a multitude of wonderful thoughts about us. A few verses after what we just read, David writes, How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. In spite of our failures of him, in spite of our selfish desires, in spite of the countless times we put what God wants behind what we want, how great is his love and care for us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a great day. Thank you.